Hi, I'm Amy from Select Travel Holidays, home of Cruise Select. Um, now, cruising has traditionally been seen as ocean going, uh, but a holiday afloat doesn't have to be on the sea. Uh, you can cruise along um, many of the great rivers too, um, and certainly river cruising has really seen a massive increase in popularity, and at Team Select, we are big fans. So now we're going to take a look at river cruising. Um, not only has river cruising grown in popularity, it's also grown in terms of the range of choices and options that are now available. Uh, so what was once quite niche of limited choices and departures uh, now offers um, really experiential holidays uh, on up to 39 rivers across the world, uh, visiting over 340 destinations. So. There's now more river cruise lines with more ships um, and they each offer something a little different um, as we shall see in our river cruise presentations. Um, we're not going to cover all of the rivers, um, I'm sure you might be glad to know given that there's 39 of them, um, but we will be taking a look at European river cruising, the main hub of rivers um, cruising, as well as presentations which focus on the Mekong and the Nile respectively, and a presentation which takes a look at some of the lesser travelled rivers across the world, um, making our way from east to west uh, with some of our river cruise lot in partners. In this presentation, I'll introduce you to some Europe's most popular rivers and some of the river cruise lines that sail along them. First, let's take a quick look at why you might like to um, try a river cruise um, if you haven't already. Uh, like its ocean cruising cousin, uh, river cruising has the fabulous advantage of taking you to different ports of call in one holiday while only unpacking once. Um, in fact, sometimes you can visit uh, two towns or villages in one day, depending on the itinerary, um, although you'll also be able to enjoy longer, often overnight stays in some of the bigger cities. Um, in my own experiences on river ships, I found that they always manage to uh, find the right amount of time um, to spend in any given place, um, and a good balance as well of between smaller towns or villages that are perhaps on the usual tourist trails and the must-see cities. Um, and all of these are enjoyed on the same trip. Like ocean cruising, you have all your meals included, um, but river cruising also tends to throw in wines, beers and soft drinks with your lunch and dinners, um, as well as excursions at ports of call and Wi-Fi as standard, uh, making it a more inclusive um, holiday than the average ocean cruise. We'll have a closer look at what each of our river cruise line partners include on their sailings with our presentations. Um, as there is some variation, of course, um, with some including even more, but I'll let them speak for themselves. So there are similarities uh, between river and ocean cruising, particularly um, in the benefits of travel and value for money. Um, but perhaps where there is an important distinction is in the phrase that often gets used in the river cruise industry, which is ocean cruising takes you to countries, river cruising takes you through countries. On the rivers, there really is the ability to go right into the heart of countries um, and local communities. After all, historically, people would settle near rivers uh, for trading and defence purposes and uh, for the natural resources the rivers provided. Um, so rivers really are the lifeblood of the communities near them. Uh, not only that, as you are cruising, you are cruising through scenery. Uh, so it's not just the places you're visiting, it's the journey itself. Um, this is true of all river cruising, where we, wherever you choose to cruise, and we'll be looking at a wide variety of rivers with our presentations. For most people, Europe is the home of river cruising, and um, it's certainly the most popular for British cruisers. There are a lot of choices of river in Europe, as well as the convenience of being a lot closer to the UK than some of the more exotic rivers we'll be looking at in other presentations. You don't even need to fly to many of these rivers thanks to uh, the Eurostar. So before I introduce you to our River Cruise Line partners, let's take a look at Europe's rivers. The heart of European uh, river cruising is in Central Europe with the Danube and the Rhine as the archetypal rivers to cruise, particularly for first timers. These two rivers dominate river cruising, but they do have their own distinct characteristics, um, sometimes generalised as fairy tale castles or imperial capitals. 
the Rhine starts in Switzerland with many river cruises beginning or ending in Baal before flowing through France and Germany, taking river cruises to Strasbourg, Koblenz, Rudesheim, Cologne and the iconic Rhine Gorge with its famous hilltop castles. Finally, the Rhine flows into the North Sea at Amsterdam, which is a major river cruise hub um, and an incredibly convenient place to start or end a river cruise. Especially in springtime, you'll find Rhine sailings um, sometimes branch out into the nearby waterways of the Netherlands and Belgium, um, where you'll see the famous uh, windmills and during the season, of course, the tulips. Um, Kirkenhof is a staple of tulip time cruises on the Belgian and Dutch waterways. Um, although other highlights can include um, Arnhem, uh, particularly for those keen on um, the Second World War history. It is possible, of course, to cruise uh, the Belgian and Dutch waterways outside of springtime, but that is the most popular time for sailings. A Rhine cruise is predominantly Germanic, uh, despite the dips into Switzerland and France and of course the Netherlands. Um, the Danube also flows through Germany um, as its source is in the Black Forest, uh, but the Danube flows through many countries and indeed capitals. Um, depending on whether your cruise is up or downstream, you'll be starting or ending with a taste of traditional Bavaria, um, often literally as trying the local beers is a must. German towns and cities that are often included on the Danube are Regensburg, Nuremberg, Passau and Wilshofen. Um, Nuremberg offers a chance to learn about the infamous Nazi rallies and um, the war crimes trials, but equally you can also take the option of uh, discovering its beautiful medieval old town. Um, and Regensburg is also again charmingly beautiful um, and home to the world's oldest sausage shop. Um, and a fascinating local legend involving the devil and a bridge. Wilshofen is small but uh, quintessentially Bavarian, uh, while Passau is actually on the confluence of three rivers, uh, giving it the nickname Three Rivers City. It's close to the border of Austria, uh, which of course also features heavily on a Danube river cruise um, itinerary. Along the Austrian stretch of a Danube river cruise, uh, You'll find charming towns such as Melk, um, home to um, its stunning abbey, um, and Dernstein, which is easily recognisable from the river with its um, beautiful uh, pastel blue Baroque church. And um, back in the Middle Ages, uh, Dernstein had a famous pr prisoner, uh, King Richard the Lionheart, for whom uh, the English had to pay a king's ransom. Um, you'll also cruise through the UNESCO-listed Rakal Valley, uh, which is an area that's as renowned for its scenic beauty as it is for its wines. Um, on the Austrian stretch, we also have the first of the imperial capitals that the Danube is so famous for, uh, the stunning city of Vienna, um, where you must try some Sasha Tort. You'll often find that the uh, Slovakian capital of Bratislava is a destination on a Danube river cruise. It's actually not that far from uh, Vienna, as well as the iconic um, Hungarian capital of Budapest. Uh, sailing past its parliament building is a highlight in its own right, especially when it's lit up beautifully at night. Um, between Budapest and um, a German town such as Passau or Wilshofen is roughly an average river cruise itinerary on the upper Danube so you would always go to Budapest um, but of course um, so the upper Danube's the stretch that we typically refer to as a Danube river cruise but of course um, there's also the lower Danube um, where the Danube um, continues to flow further east past Budapest and eventually into the Black Sea um, there are far fewer sailings um, on the Lower Danube um, and not every river cruise line uh, which sails the Danube continues past uh, Budapest into the Lower Danube. So you can enjoy uh, a more exclusive, less crowded, um, even an adventurous experience on the uh, Lower Danube. The Iron Gate Gorge, uh, which forms part of the boundary between Serbia and Romania, um, is one of the highlights of the Lower Danube, uh, but it's also arguably the, the wildlife on the Danube Delta which stills the show.
Now perhaps you can't choose between the um, Rhine and the Danube and that's perfectly fine uh, because both the Danube and the Rhine um, rivers um, can be connected um, on a river cruise thanks to the main um, Danube canal albeit it's a longer river cruise um, taking on average about 14 days between Amsterdam and Budapest. Um, the Rhine can also be combined with one of its tributaries, uh, particularly the Main and or the Moselle. Um, a cruise which takes in part of the Moselle will also take you to Cottenham and uh, Trier, uh, while the Main, which flows through Nuremberg, can also take you to one of my favourite Bavarian towns, which is Bamberg, um, twinned with Bedford. Um, Bamberg is where you can find the, um, the smoked beer, which is um, an, an acquired taste. Um, and I must say, I, I don't think I've quite acquired the taste myself. <laughs> Both the Danube and Rhine rivers are also famous for their Christmas markets um, in the winter season over November and December. Although you'll find that the river cruise season will begin again in March, um, so they're not strictly speaking year round, but you do get to have a bit of a, a winter, ex you know, it's extended into November and December thanks to the Christmas markets. So those are the main rivers in Central Europe, um, although there is of course the Elbe which runs from the Czech Republic into Germany um, and includes visits to Prague, Berlin, Dresden, Meissen and Wittenberg. Uh, but not many river cruise lines um, offer sailings on this river as it is prone to low water levels which uh, can be very disruptive. Across Europe, um, however, have used paddle wheel technology that you'll usually find on the Mississippi in order to cruise here, um, which I've also used on the Loire. Um, again, that's another uh, river that's rarely cruised due to low water levels. Although river cruisers can visit um, France on part of a Rhine cruise, they can also enjoy exclusively French experiences and really delve into France on one of the French rivers. The Seine is one of the easiest and most convenient rivers uh, to reach from the UK um, as a Seine river cruise um, typically is a round trip from Paris. Um, once you leave Paris, um, of course, you'll have some time to spend there, um, but you'll get to discover the, the beautiful northern French countryside uh, through Normandy um, and with places such as Giverny, um, where you'll visit Monet's house and you know the iconic gardens that he painted, you could also expect to discover a lot of famous artists, particularly the Impressionists. Um, so you'll hear about the likes of um, Van Gogh, um, as well as, um, I think, toulouse lautrec um, And, you know, there'll be other um, parts of the cruise where, you know, Monet will pop up again. Courant also tends to feature on a Seine river cruise. Um, its gorgeously gothic cathedral was also painted by Monet. As I say, he does tend to pop up on a Seine River cruise. But uh, Rouen is also associated with Joan of Arc. Um, and also, I guess I like to um, get some really nice macaroons from uh, Rouen whenever I visit. As well as art, the Second World War will also be featured on the Seine River cruise, with a visit to the Normandy beaches usually being offered. Sometimes you'll get alternative excursions also offered, such as Bayo or Etretat, which is a coastal town now for its rock formations. Although most river ships can't sail directly to Enfleur, um, Scenic Gem is one exception, the picturesque harbour town of Enfleur is often included as an excursion. Although we typically think of French wines, on the Seine you'll find uh, the Normandy countryside offers you the chance to taste the local ciders. And I love that a Seine river cruise um, has something to offer art lovers and those of an interest in war history too. So the Seine as a river in its own right is quite distinct from the other rivers I've just looked at, as well as the other French um, rivers that we're about to have a look at. So we'll head um, away from northern France and Normandy um, into southern France, where you'll find the Rhône and Seine rivers, uh, which can be combined at Lyon. Um, arguably the gastronomic capital of France. Um, but if you're not combining the rivers, you can either choose to cruise north of Lyon to chalons sur saone um, obviously on the Saône, um, offering you a chance to experience the Burgundy region um, and of course its famous wines. Um, or you can discover Provence uh, by cruising the Rhône south of Lyon, enjoying um, highlights such as Arles and Avignon, 
Uh, so you'll get more of a Mediterranean feel and also see some of the legacy of the Roman Empire as well as the Papal Palace. So there's lots of fascinating history um, in this region that's quite a bit different. You can also cruise the Bordeaux region, um, which again is easily accessible via train, so you don't need to fly. Um, and this is um, another region which is synonymous with its wines, especially the town of saint emilion uh, But you can also discover that Bordeaux is more than just its wines. A Bordeaux river cruise actually combines three rivers and waterways, the Garonne, the Gironde and the Dordogne. Um, I'm actually going to share um, Uniwell's uh, presentation with you now because they're focused on Bordeaux um, and we'll be joined by uh, the cruise director on board their gorgeous um, SS Bon Voyage, AJ. He's going to take us through their fabulous itinerary on Bordeaux and although other river cruise lines uh, will differ in what they will include and how they will um, take their guests to Bordeaux, um, it gives us a glimpse um, into what you can expect to enjoy on a Bordeaux river cruise um, and what you can also expect to enjoy on a Uniworld river cruise. So hello everybody, uh, AJ here and I would like to talk to you about brilliant Bordeaux. We are sailing eight days on the SS Bon Voyage. Uh, so looking at the highlights, um, as always so much to to uh, experience. Um, highlights Bordeaux, it's the capital of French wine. Uh, secondly, saint emilion uh, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, um, but certainly a real treasure trove uh, for the eye discovered together. And last but not least, we'll discover together Madoc, the great kings of red wine. Uh, so here we are, um, starting in Bordeaux, three different bodies of water, the Garonne, the Dordogne and the Gironde Estuary, which is this enormous uh, body of water which filters out towards the Atlantic Ocean. And what I love about this, uh, this, this cruise is you really have the sensation that you are out at sea. You're always under the influence of the uh, of the of the tide, and that's what really makes this uh, this experience very unique in her identity. Uh, on the bigger picture, Bordeaux can be linked uh, via TGV train to our friends on the SS Joie de Vivre with our Paris program. So here she is. She is new since 2019. And we start with the top deck because she really is um, a treat. Um, that top deck, there are no low bridges on this itinerary, so we can always work with the functionality of the infinity pool here, these tables with shade for alfresco lunches. It really is um, a beauty of, of, of a boat. And that accelerates itself also downstairs into the staterooms, um, the detailing, the, the, the detailing of not just the fabrics, but the functionality of the staterooms is certainly to be applauded. Um, unique in every sense of the word, you see here the different, uh, different categories of staterooms, the details from just having um, uh, the shoe shine, the umbrella in your in your wardrobe, all of these wonderful little details through towards the little turn down gifts on your bed every evening. And here you see the bigger picture, the art collection. There's these wonderful um, Provencal colours coming through with the art collection and that yachtsman's finish of the wood effect uh, seen throughout. And here in the, the main salon champagne, the main lounge bar, those bon bonquettes are facing out towards the river and the estuary. So you've always got these wonderful views as you sit and watch watch a life pass by. Uh, once again, those those mini palms cascading down, you're bringing the outside inside, this very natural kind of eco-friendly environment. A little bit of out of Africa, you've got these dried lavender plants who are beautifully, beautifully aesthetic with the parquet floor. She really is a treat. And downstairs, it's, it's, the, it's, it's crisp. I think that's the word, a real crisp finish to this boat. Um, downstairs, the journey of culinary reflects local dishes, local flavours, local ingredients. Um, and of course, the master chef, as always, experts in their field of French kitchen. 
And back up towards the top deck, here you have um, the kind of longer picture of the top deck with shade, which is uh, which is important. Um, and then at the very rear of the vessel, you have this location, the Café du Soleil, um, perfect for, you know, a private venue, for wine tastings, also for our al fresco lunches, the opportunity to to dine outside. Beautifully done. More venues, uh, the Cave du Van, a wine tasting location, but also a venue for private dining, um, bringing those moments of together with friends, with family, almost, a, you know, your own private dining room experience. Uh, secondly, La Brasserie, once again, having uh, somewhere alternative to, 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 to dine, it, it, it makes the experience more special, uh, a lighter, a lighter affair with the menus, but certainly a beautifully acquainted uh, environment. Um, the polish is in uh, the service, the people, the smiles, the friendliness, and of course the delivery of such fine products um, on board. And so here we are, the landscapes are changing day to day, uh, but typically uh, the vineyards reign supreme over this itinerary. And let's have a little peep at where we uh, start after leaving Bordeaux. Uh, so arriving in Blaye, and the good news is it's nothing to do with wine. And that's the joy this week. It's not just a wine cruise. I have to stress that. This is uh, a 16th century fortress, um, you know, built in the great days of Louis XIV. Some friends will discover it. Some friends will take this magical journey along the estuary. Other friends, well-being. A yoga class in the fortress you can't top this stuff it really is um, a kind of a lovely balance of 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 well-being and history together on this first day we link it with borg a little village uh, we'll sail to it in the afternoon and we'll end the day with um, a can-can dress rehearsal before a can-can show after dinner i mean the the the, the detailing in this itinerary is is just magical Day three, um, we're sailing. We'll have a lecture on board World War Two. We're then going to stock in the middle of nowhere, a historical monument, Fort Madoc. And a young man named Bertron has driven all the way from the Bay of Arcachon with fresh oysters. Physically, he'll crack them open for us in this fortress, al fresco, with a glass of white wine. I mean, you can't top this, it's amazing. That is in essence our aperitif, and we're now going to sail through towards Pauillac. Um, one size does not fit all choices. Let's go bike. Let's discover the Murdoch wine road or the bunkers. Some friends here physically cycling through the vineyards with a wine tasting. Other friends taking this wine road, seeing the architectural glamour of these estates and wine tasting at a classified chateau. Other friends, I'm not interested in wine. Fair enough. Let's talk about World War II. Um, a man called uh, Jean Paul will welcome his. He lived through the war and his legacy is 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 looking after bunkers as though the German army have just left, beautifully restored. And this really is a story from his heart, a wonderful, wonderful experience. Thereafter, we're now sailing up the Garonne River, a port called Cadillac. Different choices, be it the Royal Chateau of Cazeneuve. The owners physically meet us. Uh, he's a count, Count Louis, had to be a Louis. Uh, he will meet us. He will show us his private apartments. I mean, the family physically live there today. You can't top this. And we'll combo this with the local appellation, sweet white wine, sauterne, or the art connection, Chateau Malromé. Uh, Malromé, the link here, Henri Toulouse-Lautrec. His mother lived here. This is where he came every summer. And we'll delve into his, his troubled past as a post-impressionist artiste. And here she is, um, Santa Million, this ubiquitous cachet of, 
of underground monuments, great architecture, phenomenal wines. Uh, we'll really delve into her, her joy and she is joyful. And certainly everybody has a special place for her. You'll have that moment to, um, you know, stroll, watch the world go by, people watch, have your own little wine tasting. This day really gives you ample opportunity to fall in love with this very special place of, of France. Now to Libourne, we're docked next to a farmer's market. You can't beat this. We'll visit the farmer's market, some little nibbles, and we'll combine this as part of our village day by visiting local people. Fantastic. Before we culminate in Bordeaux, on the way, more entertainment. George Smith, these wonderful British boys, which bring back the great days of a British um, guitar band. Uh, we have a concept called paint and sip. Sip and express yourself. But arriving in Bordeaux, um, you can be as a local does. Take the tram and physically eat your way through the city on day seven and admire the architecture, which is very Paris-esque. Or take our cycles out with our escorted bike tour. There's also the opportunity to visit the Cité du Vin, this fabulous uh, wine exhibition. We'll give you the tickets. Um, but here she is. You can see the glamour. She is a surprise. She'll take your breath away because she is not the obvious, um, but certainly um, a, 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 a almost Versailles-esque city in her identity. We call her the Sleeping Beauty, and I hope you can join us on board this discovery of brilliant Bordeaux on the SS Bon Voyage. Last reflections. Look at that dessert, look at the, 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 the cheese platters there. I mean, really, the, the, the team are experts in their delivery, not just of the, of, the, of the hardware, but also the software, that welcome back smile, that welcome back towel. That is what makes UniWorld so unique and so special to travel with. From the entire operation, as always, thank you very much for listening. So that was um, Bordeaux with UniWorld. Um, Uniworld do offer um, other river cruises along other rivers, um, including even the Po in Italy. And you'll see in our Nile um, presentation that they've got um, a stunning uh, new ship on the Nile. Um, but they also offer um, other rivers such as the Mekong and um, some other um, exotic um, rivers such as the Ganges, which we haven't fe um, featured in our presentations. Sharon and I have been lucky enough to uh, enjoy the Christmas markets on the Danube with uh, Uniworld and uh, Bella has actually um, cruised Bordeaux with um, Uniworld on what was then called the River Royale um, which was recently upgraded to, upgraded to what is now the stunning um, SS Bon Voyage um, that we've just seen. So as you can see, um, you know, we know um, Uniworld um, pretty well with our own um, personal first-hand experiences. Um, Uniworld are, you might have guessed, um, famous for their opulent river ships. Um, I mean, we can just see how striking um, Bon Voyage is. Um, and you'll find that no two are alike in their fleet, um, as each ship painstakingly uh, reflects the regions it cruises through. Finally, before we take a look at our other river cruise lines, I'm going to introduce my favourite European river, the Douro. This is an increasingly popular river, uh, particularly with British cruisers, and it's now the third most popular river for Brits to cruise on overall. Um, you can either choose a Porto round trip or cruise between uh, Porto and uh, Vega de Turon on the um, Spanish border. Um, and the Douro is great for um, pre or post cruise extensions to either Lisbon or Madrid. Although most of the river can actually be found in Spain, uh, it's only navigable um, along the Portuguese stretch. And this is only a relatively recent development, uh, thanks to the building of locks, um, which were um, eventually completed in, in the 90s. Um, and of which there's about five you'll cruise through. I haven't mentioned locks yet, um, but they're a large part of the European river cruising experience. Um, and you'll, you'll often find people um, trying to get the best possible view, um, although sometimes there will be restrictions on, on the sun deck. Um, for example, you might not be allowed to stand up <laughs> um, if you know the bridge is too low. Um, and you will also sometimes find that the captain's bridge or anything on the um, sun deck um, 
will be collapsible so that they can either go up or down according to whether the bridge is approaching or not. However, there is plenty to be enjoyed on the Portuguese side of the Douro um, and you'll also have the opportunity to um, hop across the border for um, a full day excursion to the Spanish city of Salamanca. Um, it's often called the Golden City because of the, um, the stone um, that they've used um, for all the buildings. I mean, it's beautiful. Um, and it's also home to one of Europe's oldest universities and uh, two cathedrals. There are so many highlights that I enjoyed on the Douro um, last year, not least Porto of course and uh, the port tasting, uh, but this is truly a stunningly scenic river cruise um, as you'll be cruising through a UNESCO listed area throughout the whole Douro Valley and it's a very relaxed pace on board which um, sets it apart from a lot of its um, other European counterparts. Of course there are a few other European rivers that I haven't particularly touched on um, including the Russian waterways but um, hopefully you've got enough of an idea um, of where you can cruise in Europe and although I've shown you Uniworld already it's now time to take a look at who you can cruise these rivers with uh, so they can tell you how they offer something different on these rivers. Um, there is a separate presentation on Amma Waterways as they have a large European fleet, about um, 23 out of their 25, soon to be 26 ships are on Europe's rivers. And John from Amma Waterways has gone into more detail about what they offer on board and their itineraries. However, for now, allow me to introduce Avalon Waterways and their European river ships. You'll find that you can also cruise with Avalon on the Mekong, the Nile and the Ganges. Um, you'll see that that Avalon feature in our river cruise presentations. Um, but for now, Lloyd is going to take, give us a look at uh, what you can expect when cruising Europe with Avalon Waterways. Sailing the European waterways with Avalon Waterways. Avalon Waterways have 14 ships sailing the European waterways. We are a five-star luxury river cruise brand and pride ourselves in offering a relaxed luxury feel on board, a refined but unpretentious atmosphere, just high quality service in an environment designed to help you relax. Over the years, we have prided ourselves in a constant fleet, so no matter which of our ships you sail on, there is always a familiar feel on board. From the dining room to the lounge areas, our deck plans mirror a constant feel throughout all of our ships. We are also super proud to offer a 100% off suite fleet meaning no matter which of our ships you sail on, you have the opportunity to experience our award-winning Panorama Suite. We form part of the Globus family of brands, a worldwide group of travel companies. We are family owned and independently run with over 90 years experience in the travel industry. We include an inclusive cruise package, a standard. Our cruise fares include excursions, drinks at mealtimes, gratuities and Wi-Fi. We have a huge range of product and have a cruise for everybody, from three and four day taster cruises on the Rhine, all the, all the way up to 27 days on the Danube, from the Black Sea to the North Sea. Welcome to our incredible Panorama Suite, designed for relaxed luxury with your comfort in mind. The Julian Avalon's crown is our incredible Panorama Suite, with an expansive 200 square feet of living space that makes them 20% larger than the industry standard. These incredible staterooms also feature a massive wall-to-wall, -wall, floor-to-ceiling window, measuring 11 feet across. The window opens a full 7 foot, creating River Cruises' only open air balcony. Not only are our panorama suites on our sweet ships 30% larger than the industry standard, we stitch things up by turning our beds to face the wall-to-wall, floor-to-ceiling window, giving you the incredible bed with a view. And here are some examples of our fantastic onboard decor. Beyond our wall to wall, floor to ceiling windows is a world waiting to be explored. Avalon has designed included excursions with a choice of experiences. We welcome you to select the tours, activities and events that interest you the most so you can experience your cruise your way. 
Avalon Choice Excursions break down into three categories, Classic, Discovery and Active. Whether you want to enjoy a guided walking tour of one of Europe's great cities, join a cooking class or paddle a canoe, Avalon Choice offers a wide range of possibilities on every European cruise. If you're looking for a slightly more immersive experience, our unique Active and Discovery cruises provide more Active and Discovery options in every port. Now let's take a look at one of our most popular itineraries, the Danube Dreams, an eight-day itinerary sailing from Budapest to Dagendorf. Cruise along the peaceful Danube River through Hungary, Slovakia, Austria and Germany, discovering some of central Europe's most splendid capitals and charming towns along the way. Available from April to October, this itinerary has something for everybody. Highlights include a classic walking tour in Bratislava to discover the quaint streets of the old town, the town hall and fantastic St Martin's Cathedral. Wine lovers can enjoy a wine tasting session to savour the flavours of the Wacker Valley. Keen hikers can join a guided hike in Durstein, enjoy incredible views of the spectacular village and the Danube River. In keeping with a relaxed feel on board, Avalon's Flex Dining gives you the options for dining venues and dining times. Build in the mission that your cruise is your own and it's your choice when and where to eat. We have options to suit all moods, from a breezy al fresco lunch at the Sky Grill to an elegant four-course dinner in our main dining room. For a less formal sit-down atmosphere, take a more casual approach in our Panorama Bistro. You can also choose to have complimentary continental breakfast in your cabin or take a picnic lunch off the ship. Incredible value for money included as standard in your cruise fare are Return UK flights or trains All overseas transfers Deluxe accommodation Full board dining with soft drinks, beers and wines with lunch and dinners Includes daily excursions and sightseeing trips Gratuities for cruise director and crew. Onboard lecturers, activities and nightly piano music. Captain's welcome reception and a five course farewell dinner. Free Wi-Fi on board. Local port charges and airport taxes. Your safety on board is our top priority. And in these ever changing times, our Avalon Assurance is our six point plan for keeping you safe on board. Consider that you travel with the same group, adhering to health checks throughout the trip. You are travelling through countries in the same room, so there's much less contact and change in between destinations. We have reduced ship capacity, increased dining venues and enhanced cleaning procedures on board. And that you skip the line at attractions to make it easier and safer. Also remember when river cruising, you're only ever a few feet from shore and medical assistance if needed. Sharon from Titan Travel is now going to give us um, a quick introduction to river cruising with Titan. You may be more familiar with Titan if you enjoy escorted touring, but they do also offer uh, river cruising as Sharon will show us. Hello, my name is Sharon Angove and I work for Titan Travel. I've been invited by Cruise Select to take part in their virtual cruise week and to tell you more about river cruising with Titan. Each of our river cruise ships and partner cruise lines have been handpicked to offer you the best blend of quality and value. The onboard experience can vary depending on the cruise line, so choosing the right one for you can be just as important as picking the river on which you want to sail. Allow me to introduce to you the MS Serenade 1. The MS Serenade 1 is one of the ships that we charter for exclusive Titan River Cruises. By chartering these ships just for our customers, we're able to tailor every aspect, food, excursions, entertainment, to ensure that you have a seamless holiday experience from start to finish. Each sailing is accompanied by a Titan tour manager and a cruise director, and they're on hand 24 seven to make sure that everything runs smoothly and to answer any questions that you may have. The ship starts the season in April with spring sailings on the Dutch waterways before spending summer and autumn on the Rhine and the Moselle. Cabins are especially spacious by river cruise standards and they even come with separate showers and bathtubs. With a lounge bar, 
mini gym, sauna and large sun deck, there's plenty of room on board the MS Serenade 1 to relax. Here at Titan, we're excited to welcome the spacious and elegant MS River Discovery 2 to our fleet. From June 2021, she sails the scenic waters of the Danube, passing quaint Wachau Valley vineyards and elegant culture-filled cities along the way. The ship offers passengers generously sized cabins over three decks and a splendid choice of accommodation. With dedicated cabins for solo travellers, superior cabins with French balconies, superb deluxe suites and an opulent owner's suite. Meanwhile, the communal areas are perfectly designed for guests to mingle. Passengers can relax in the ship's two stylish lounges or the spacious sun deck, which has a walking track and giant chess. The Captain's Club Lounge on the middle deck also has a retractable roof and panoramic windows, so guests can enjoy an alfresco experience. For those looking for some quiet time, retreat to the library or use the onboard gym. Every Titan holiday starts and ends at your front door with our VIP travel service. Our VIP drivers will make sure their vehicles are sanitised and spotless for your journey to and from the airport. When you book a holiday with Titan, we want to make sure that you can do so with confidence. Our early bird price promise means that we'll automatically refund the difference if we lower the price of your holiday after you've booked. We've also introduced our flexi deposit of £49 per person and this allows you to make unlimited changes to your holiday up until the final balance payment date with no additional charges. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the benefits of river cruising with Titan. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact your cruise select team or even better, join us on the river cruise panel for live questions and answers. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this short presentation today and I really hope that we're able to welcome you on a Titan River Cruise in the very near future. Stay safe and well. Bye. Hebrideer might be better known for cruising the Highlands and Islands of Scotland on their incomparable Hebridean Princess, um, which I hope you saw in um, their own breakout presentation as part of our luxury cruise focus. Um, however, if you want to experience um, the unique Hebridean touch on the rivers of Europe, um, Hannah will introduce us to the Charming Royal Crown, uh, which offers a limited season of river cruises. Um, I've experienced uh, the Royal Crown of uh, Hebridean and I must say uh, it really is the perfect companion to Hebridean Princess. But let's just have a little look here. Hello, my name's Hannah Cockle and I'm here to talk to you about our Hebridean River Cruises. So we charter the ship called the Royal Crown and we run a series of cruises each season um, called Hebridean River Cruises. And we take our ethos of small, unique, um, high levels of service cruising um, on board the European rivers. Um, and we use this ship called the Royal Crown. As you can see, she really is um, a beautiful vessel um, and she really does stand out um, on, the, on the rivers, in the, on the European rivers. Um, Okay, so we, uh, we, she takes a maximum of 70 guests um, and next year in 2021, we are uh, running three different cruises in August and September. Here are some of the tours um, that, we, that we include. So we do include absolutely everything on board Hebridean Rivers like we do on our other products. Um, we include all your shore tours and our tours are not your standard off the peg tours. They, we do like to, to make sure they are unique and something special. For instance, I was out on the rivers a few years back and we went to a cheese market and we had a private VIP area at the front of the cheese market. So we had the best possible spot to experience the, the, uh, the local event. We include all shore, all meals on board the ship um, and all transfers to get to the ship. So we like to accompany the travel. So we meet uh, you at the airport or at the Euro, uh, at the, at the Euro tunnel and we um, accompany you. So the flights is a group flight and it's from Leeds, uh, from London Heathrow and, um, and that's an accompanied travel um, experience there and back. And that's obviously a transfers once you get there to the ship as well. And that's all included in the price, along with your food, along with your drink and all these VIP uh, special tours that we put on as well. So it is a genuinely all inclusive 
um, product. Obviously, here is the restaurant. Um, you know, we like to bring that Scottish feel um, onto the European rivers, as you can see there. That's at your cruise director, um, hotel director on board in his kilt, uh, doing the address to the haggis um, in the on the European rivers, which really is something to behold. Um, but it does add that Scottish feel and that Hebridean flavour to the product. Um, the we the breakfast and lunch and dinner on board again single seating um, and it is um, buffet style for lunch and for uh, breakfast and the evenings tend to be more of a formal affair um, it's a mixture of European and British food um, all locally sourced as much as we can uh, along with uh, obviously selections of wines again that have been paired especially for the meals here is the lounge where you come after dinner for a bit of uh, informal entertainment. You'll see a baby grand piano in the corner and we bring a musician out from the UK to join the cruise. He may play some songs, a bit of dancing, and there might be some after dinner, you know, uh, talk, talks or uh, stories uh, from the cruise team. But it's an informal uh, entertainment um, on board in this kind of art deco style um, lounge that we have here. So there's three grades of cabin. There is the uh, Royal Suites, which have the little sitting room there at the bottom um, on the pictures. Then we have the um, premium cabins, um, which have the queen size beds and the portholes, and then the deluxe cabins, which are the twin configuration. All the cabins are very comfortable and have all have private facilities. And we have, I'd say, a maximum of 70 guests on board. So again, this is very, very small um, amount of, of guests when a small ship cruising. We, we do sell the Royal Crown at a lower capacity than it can take just to have that feeling of space on board, which we feel is, is um, important to, to our guests. OK, so that really does um, tell you a little bit about, about um, our, what we do on the rivers. As I say, it is something that we just do a very small programme um, for 2021, three, three cruises. But it's something that just gives you that you know, if you want the Hebridean feel, you want that small ship cruising, but you want to go a little bit further afield than Scotland, then Hebridean Rivers is something that, that you may choose. Um, we, it's been a very popular programme now that we've run for a number of years. Um, it just gives our guests um, the chance to experience Hebridean ethos of small, um, small ship cruising with that high level of service, attention to detail, but, but go a little bit further afield and experience it on, on, the, on the European rivers. OK, thank you very much for your time. Again, I'm going to be around to answer any questions that you might have about river cruising or Hebridean rivers. Um, and I look forward to do so. Thank you. Finally, we're going to have a look at Scenic um, and they're all inclusive luxury river cruising in Europe. Um, they also have a sister brand, um, Emerald Waterways, who offer European river cruising. In fact, I cruised the Douro with Emerald last year. But for Europe, Joseph will be introducing us to the Scenic and their fabulous ships. So um, let's have a look now. Hello, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to take you on a journey along the rivers of Europe on my presentation today. So I'm just going to share my screen with you and I'm going to tell you about river cruising with Scenic. I've only got 10 minutes, so it's going to be fairly, uh, fairly quick. So first of all, I'm Joseph Grimley, Director of Sales UK for Scenic. Uh, who are Scenic? Well, you may have heard of us, you may not. Uh, we started life in Australia in 1986. We're now a global business um, doing escorted tours and river cruises. We started doing river cruising in 2008 and we decided that the ships on Europe's rivers weren't really up to scratch. So we built ourselves a fleet. Um, so we cover most of the main rivers in Europe. We are at the top end of river cruising. We've won lots of awards and probably the most notable one is the which recommended provider for river cruises in 2020. Um, we were voted a best river cruise line. So why choose a scenic river cruise? Well, like ocean cruising, you unpack once, but you explore somewhere new nearly every day. Unlike ocean cruising, you get to see something out of your window or while you're up on deck for the whole of your cruise. Lots of scenery. Um, the ships themselves are very intimate, they're very spacious and they're very stylish. You have a choice of staterooms and suites, so you can have 
um, a suite with a French balcony. You can have a owner suite, a royal owner suite. Um, the choice is up to you. Food is fantastic, just like ocean cruising. You get really, really amazing food prepared by experts. So again, like ocean cruising, all about the food. Service is fantastic. You're spoiled rotten by all of the staff on board and your own private butler. The ratio is one to three from staff to guests. Excursions are included. Whoa, amazing. And you do get a fantastic choice as well. So you can choose what you want to do in the morning, in the afternoon, etc. And drinks and food is all included as well. So we are truly all inclusive. This is wine, soft drinks, spirits, um, etc. Just sit back and relax and be weighted on hand and foot. Um, we will look after you to the nth degree. So where do we go? Well, pretty much most of Europe's iconic rivers. Um, I haven't got time today to cover all of them in detail, but I'll just focus on a couple for you. One of the probably the most um, frequent questions I get asked is, where should I go on my first river cruise? Well, it's pretty much a heads or tails between the Danube and the Rhine. If you choose the Danube, you're getting many iconic cities all rolled into one journey. So Budapest, Vienna, Salzburg, um, you can choose from a seven night, eight day or a 14 night, 15 day um, journey. If you do the 15 day journey, you get the Rhine as well. So that takes all of the choice of deciding, do I do the Rhine or do the Danube? Do both on the jewels of Europe. The lower Danube is getting really, really popular for a maybe second or third river cruise. If you've done the upper Danube, you've done the Rhine, um, have a look at the lower Danube. It takes you from Budapest down to the Black Sea. And again, two options, either um, an eight, eight, an eight, nine day, eight night, or a 15 day, 14 night option. The Rhine and Moselle, again, an amazing uh, choice of river cruise, very, very picturesque. You glide past picture postcard towns with the half timbered buildings. You go through some amazing scenery on the Rhine Gorge. You can do Amsterdam down to Switzerland. So you go all the way down to Basel, um, or you can do a romantic Rhine and Moselle. So you just take a little meander along the Moselle through the, uh, the steep banking vineyard scenery there as well. And the Rhone, south of France, we can take you from Lyon down to Marseille, or you can do the 11 day round trip from Lyon through the beautiful scenery of the south of France. Bordeaux is getting a, a very popular region for river cruising. Not that many companies do it. We do two options there, either an eight day Bordeaux uh, affair, or we do the beautiful Bordeaux. And we take in towns like saint Emilion. It's very much all about um, chateaus, vineyards, wine tasting, and some amazing scenery. I keep saying the word scenery, don't I? Well, that's what river cruising is all about. New for 2021, we've got some culinary themed gastronomic cruises in both the, on both the Rhone and also um, the Bordeaux um, region of France. And the Douro, you may wish to um, cruise the river, the mighty Douro in Portugal, and that takes you from Porto towards the Spanish border and then back again, again, two different duration options. So the floating hotels themselves, very, very well kitted out with all of the amenities that you might expect. Um, from a luxury environment, you have various dining options. You have the, uh, the sun deck with plenty of shaded area, probably where I spend most of my time on a river cruise, to be honest. It's where you get the best views. Lovely suites on board, very contemporary. You get a feeling of staying in a, in a beautiful boutique five-star hotel. And we also painted the famous scenic sun lounge system. So you'll see the windows there in the cabin. Press the button and the window comes down. So you let all of the fresh air into your cabin. Um, it opens it up. And it's a really, really nice environment. And as you can tell, again, you've got the views from your cabin all of the time as well. Bathrooms are very spacious with all of the amenities that you can expect. Um, Royal Panorama Suite. So if you want a little bit more space, um, it gives you a separate little dining area there. If you want even more space, then go for the Royal Owner Suite. Wow, very luxurious way of, of um, taking a river cruise, staying in a Royal Owner Suite. And in the Royal Owner Suite, you get the addition of a bathtub as well as your separate shower cubicle too. Food and beverage, as I mentioned, it's all included. So you don't put your hand in your pocket. You don't sign for anything. You don't pay for any tips. You just have what you want, when you want. So the main, main dining room is the Crystal Dining. 
Um, question I get asked a lot is, are there tables for two? Well, yes, there are. So if you're feeling uh, particularly romantic or just antisocial, you should be able to find a table for two where you can just enjoy an intimate dinner. Or you may wish to sit on a larger table and be a bit more sociable with uh, your newfound cruising friends. Portobello's is a separate restaurant you'll be invited to once during your stay. It's just a more intimate dining venue. And the Tableau La Rive, if you're staying in one of the suites or you're a scenic loyalty guest, then you'll be invited to dine on the Tableau La Rive with the um, wine pairing degustation menu. Or if you just fancy a light bite, pop along to the River Cafe for a Danish, for a sandwich, for a cup of coffee uh, or a late breakfast. Or if you don't want to venture anywhere and you just want to stay in your luxurious suite, then pick up the phone, call your butler and have breakfast delivered to you in, in bed. And there he is, looking very smart, your butler. You can pick up the phone and you can order a latte, a cocktail, a beer, a wine. It will be brought to your suite um, whenever you really, really spoiled and looked after on a scenic river cruise. Scenic Culinaire is our cookery school on board our French ships, so you can uh, go along to cookery demonstrations. You can uh, have your hair done, your beard trimmed, have a massage in our wellness area. Work off a few calories in the onboard gym. Or take an e-bike or go on an e-bike excursion. I thought I'd put that photo in there. That's me. Um, when I did the Bordeaux cruise, we went on an amazing excursion through the vineyards, um, visiting chateaus, wine tasting, and it's effortless because these bikes are electrically assisted. So you just pedal softly and it takes you wherever you want to go, up hills, etc., without all of the effort and uh, sweat. <laughs> Included excursions, um, we have a great choice. We have, do you recognize that one? Yeah, it's from the label of the 1970s Matthias Rosé wine. Um, that's one of our free choice when you're, when you're doing the Duro. We have our exclusive Enrich, oops, just go back, our Enrich experiences. This one's the Rastat Palace, um, where we have a classical music recital exclusively for senior customers. Local guides will take you and show you the sites, show you the history, the architecture, really bring the destinations to life for you. So our ships are amazing. The sweets, you've got a fantastic choice. You're looked after by your butlers. You've got all of the food and the wine and spirits that you can drink, premium stuff. We have our enriched experiences and we also uh, have our free choice. We have a tailor-made device so you can go off and explore independently. It's an app on your phone, which has commentary. It has, um, uh, guided notes uh, and it's GPS enabled so you can find your way back to the ship and we take care of you to the nth degree. So our main edition brochure for 2021 is out now. Request your copy from Crew Select. We're giving you a free home chauffeur transfer so you're picked up and taken to the airport up to £1,200 for a couple discount as well. We have new taster cruise, a four-night Imperial Europe on there, the gastronomic cruises in France and 2022 is out early um, by popular demand so if you're Planning ahead for 2022, there's no brochure yet, but all of the itineraries are on the website or speak to the lovely people at Cruise Select. Have full confidence. If you do book and for whatever reason decide that you don't want to go on your cruise, you can change the date up to 60 days before and have a look on our website. You'll see all of the measures that we've taken um, to introduce new protocols to keep everybody safe and well in this um, new um, era that we find ourselves in. Also, if you want more information, then we have some detailed presentations. They're about 20 minutes long on our website at scenic.co.uk, our brand new scenic online travel showcase. And um, so you can see in detail the Douro, the Danube, the Rhine, the Rhone, and also some more about our ships as well. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's been uh, a very quick 10 minutes. Um, look on our website for more information. Talk to our lovely friends at Cruise Select if you want them to check availability, give you prices or book your next scenic river cruise. Thank you very much and take care. Well, I hope you enjoyed our um, European river cruise presentation. This really is a fabulous way to travel through Europe and there are so many incredible experiences that you can enjoy with any of these river cruise lines. Um, although they can look quite similar on the outside, um, I hope you've seen that they each offer something um, something different um, and unique on board and ashore um, and that there's more choices, options and activities available. Um, even if river ships are um, considerably smaller than uh, their ocean cruises. 
Um, there will also be presentations focusing on um, some more exotic rivers, as I've mentioned. Um, and you'll be able to meet some of these river cruise lines again, as well as being introduced to some new river cruise lines. I'll then be joined by all of the um, river cruise um, lines for a panel discussion on river cruising, which I hope you'll enjoy. Um, and if you would like to find out more about cruising on Europe's rivers, uh, give us a call on 01234 326 758 or email sales at cruiseselect.co.uk. But for now, I hope, um, for now, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you for taking the time to watch our presentation on Europe's rivers and um, I hope you found it informative and inspiring.